Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Art Wilson, and I am the pastor of the International Church of Metro Detroit and the Wafunif United Nations Goodwill Ambassador in Manhattan, New York. And it is such an honor to be able to greet you and to teach this session. I want to thank the selection committee, our Bishop David Bernard and Administrating Secretary Scott Graham for this wonderful opportunity to speak at this year's 2022 General Conference. My topic is Global Reset or Godly Reset. Global Reset or Godly Reset. Now, I know that topic seems to be very difficult to understand. So let me see if I can pull all this together for you in just a few moments. But as we begin to talk about this topic, let me just draw your attention to some very important points before I get to the subject. We are living in the last days. We are living in the last of last days. This is the hour in which the ends of the earth and the ends of the world have come. This is what we have been praying about and fasting about and been speaking and preaching about and teaching about and prophesying about. We have come to the end of the ends and it is a great day for the church of the living God. And yes, our world is in a reset. I said our world is in a reset and times are changing all around us. Chaos is everywhere. It just seems like things are changing from one moment to the next. The news reports are like reading the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel. It's like we're watching prophecy unfold right before our eyes interwoven into natural events. It almost seems too wild to be true. But I'm telling you, we are in the end times. This is the time that we call the Kodesh Moedim, the times that will be holy, where God is going to do incredible things in the earth. Great things are about to happen for the church of the living God. In the year 2020, and I have spoken about this often at General Conference and everywhere I can, the year 2020 was very unique. 2020 was a significant paradigm shift, not just in our world, but it is included. Our world shifted as well, but also in the spirit world. And we've talked often about the reset that has taken place. And we've been focusing on the worldview, politics, economics, culture, the economy, superpowers are aligning themselves. We understand the world is resetting. In 1991, George W. Bush Sr. made the declaration that we are now entering into a day of a one world system. No one really understood what he was talking about, but now we are seeing it play out as we watch as powers align themselves for the same purpose. And now we call it a reset. Through the United Nations and the United Nations ministry, God has opened doors for me to have high level access and information even about this reset. God has done three very, very significant things at the United Nations. He's opened three very strategic doors in this hour. And God has made ways through this United Nations ministry for the whole world to be impacted. And the United Nations ministry is not just comprised of myself. We have a powerful team. We have incredible men and women of God that have invested into this ministry, have preached and ministered into this ministry. Prophet Lee Stone King, Bishop David Bernard, Bishop Robert Henson, Bishop Don Hanscom, and on and on and on it goes of all the investments and prophetic words that has spoken in to this wonderful ministry. And we are thankful for it. But the first of the strategic doors that God has opened through this United Nations ministry is the church within the United Nations. The Lord has literally created a church within the United Nations behind the iron walls of the UN where we thought something like that could have never happened. Something like that was not possible. 
and before this ministry, I wouldn't have believed it myself. But God is showing us his power in this last hour because yes, the United Nations is the administrative superpower of this world, but God is still put a church within the UN. We've baptized over 43 people in the name of Jesus Christ who received the Holy Ghost and is in the church of the living God in this hour. Great things is happening and God is moving on every level in this world because God is going to have a church even within the United Nations. And that strategic door for there to be a church in Manhattan, New York, behind the iron walls of the UN is now a reality. The second strategic door that God has opened through the United Nations ministry is that I have been blessed to be a special advisor to the United Nations, which has opened incredible doors for me to be a part of tours of duty, to me to, to be a part of international relationships and, and bridge building and mediation. And through that, God has opened doors for us to reach hundreds and hundreds of people with this wonderful truth. And many people have been saved through the efforts of this appointment as a special advisor. And God is helping the United Nations ministry have a reach around the world and even assist in areas that is possible for our ministry at the United Pentecostal Church. Also, the third strategic door that God has opened is me being a Wafunif Goodwill Ambassador, which has put me in position, a strategic position to have access to information and to hear what is happening behind the scenes so that I can share and be a resource to the men and women of God and this fellowship. So God is doing incredible things through this United Nations ministry in this hour, in this hour of a reset. God is right in the middle of it, providing us information for the whole world through this ministry. Can I tell you that Jesus is in control and he is still on the throne and God has made it possible for revival to happen everywhere. And we're very, very excited about what the Lord is doing. And this paradigm shift was not just a physical paradigm shift that we're seeing. And I focused a lot on what's going on in our world, but something is happening in the spirit world as well. The church is going through a similar reset. Not only is there a global reset, but there is a godly reset that is taking place for the purpose of global revival. Now, reset means to start over, to clear the books, to erase all previous information, to go back to the drawing board. And yes, I know this session is working with the world's reset, and that is exactly what the world's vision is concerning the world. But there's a better term to talk about when we describe the reset that is taking place in the last day church. There is more of an evolutionary process to what is happening to the church. Now, the world may be trying to start over and implement a new vision, which we'll have to talk about in a different session. But in the spirit world concerning the church, there's better terms for the reset of the church because we're not going back to the drawing board per se. We are not clearing the books per se. We're more involved in an, in an evolutionary process. I call a metamorphosis. And I know we're hearing more and more about this word meta, metaverse, meta universe, meta this, meta that. But can I tell you, there is a metamorphosis that is taking place in the church that I want to discuss. Now, metamorphosis means the changing of one organism evolving into a greater, more fulfilled form. Let me say that again. A, a, a metamorphosis literally means the changing of one organism and it evolving into a greater form of itself. Amen. A metamorphosis, when you see a caterpillar begin to weave 
that cocoon. And in that cocoon, he struggles and, and in struggle, the, the greater the struggle for that caterpillar, the more beautiful the colors in his wings as he goes through a metamorphosis in that cocoon because he's going to become something greater, something more gifted, something more powerful, something with more abilities. And all that was taking place in that cocoon while that caterpillar was becoming a butterfly. The church is not going back to the drawing board and starting all over again. The church is evolving. The church is going through a metamorphosis. The church is becoming something better. The church is becoming something more powerful. The church is beginning to strengthen itself to meet the demands of a lost and dying world. And as dark as it is getting, God is getting ready to equip his church with the power to have revival like we have never seen before. Can I tell you the church doesn't look anything like it looked a hundred years ago. The church doesn't look anything like it looked 50 years ago. The church doesn't even resemble the church 20 years ago. This church is rapidly evolving and, 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 and it is adjusting and, and it, is, it is moving and, and, and growing to meet the demands that is happening in this lost and dying world. Reinforcements are coming to the church so that we are stronger and more gifted and more anointed and more powerful. And I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Let me just bring this back down to a session. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter five and uh, verse number 20, it tells us something like this, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The key word there is abounding. As sin gets darker and gets stronger and gets more evil and begins to descend into its original state of wickedness, God let us know in Romans that grace is going to abound. Grace is going to become more powerful. Grace is going to become more strengthened. Can I tell you that as the world gets darker, the church begins to evolve and, and go through a metamorphosis. And as the world gets darker and we think that wickedness is dominant. But can I tell you, wickedness has no power and control over the church. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by in any means hurt you. God is going to keep increasing our power to be greater than the demands and the wickedness that is coming from an evil, evil world and an evil spirit world. We are going through a metamorphosis. And yes, we struggle. Yes, we went through hardships. Yes, we had some issues when the, when the paradigm shift happened. In 2020, it seemed like for one minute there, we didn't understand what was going on and we couldn't find our way, but we were struggling in that cocoon because we're getting ready to, we're getting ready to emerge as something great and powerful in this last hour. We are being prepared to meet the darkness of this day. We will have global revival. Amen. There are three things that the Lord revealed to me in our vision at the International Church of Metro Detroit this year in January. The Lord spoke to me and told me that there are three things that God is going to increase for his church. As we go through this metamorphosis, there are three things that, and there may be more, but there are three things that I have seen from the Lord that is getting ready to increase for the kingdom of God in this hour as we get prepared to meet the descending darkness of this world and this reset that is about to take place. First thing that we're getting ready to see happen is that greater is coming to the church. Yes, greater is coming to the church. Bible tells us in John chapter 14 and verse number 12, it says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do 
shall he do also. This is the point I want to focus on. And greater works than these shall he do. Now, what is Jesus talking about? Greater works than these? The works that was done in the Holy New Testament? Do we have a prophecy that the last day church, when it exercises its faith, is going to do greater works than the things that we have read about? The things that we have seen in our New Testament scriptures, the things that have been prophesied, the things that we have shouted about. Are we going to do greater things in this last hour than what we have seen taking place in the past? Well, I read this just as such. Jesus said, if you believe on me and the works that I do, shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do. When I start thinking of this scripture, my mind starts to wander into illustrations. And you've got to forgive me because I start thinking and making comparisons. What is greater works? What is greater works? Greater works? Well, let me just think. Jesus walked on water and so did Peter. Greater works? Lazarus came walking out of a tomb after being dead four days. By now he stinketh, but greater works. Blind eyes was opened. Deaf ears was unstopped, but greater works. Exactly what Jesus said in John 14, that in that last hour, we're going to enter a day of greater works. And I want to tell the church at this, this year's 2022 General Conference, Prepare for greater works to come to your church. Prepare for greater works to be revealed unto us. We're getting ready to see the greatest hour that the church has ever seen. We've got to shout about it. We've got to worship about it because it is on its way. God is preparing us for greater works. I want you to know that all the incredible things that is normal on the missions field, I'm telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. All the incredible things that is normal on the missions field is going to be normal on the local field. All the things we shout about as our missionaries come through and tell us the incredible things that is happening. We're getting ready to shout about it. That's going to happen for your cousin and your and the elders in the church and, and the people around the community. We're getting ready to see greater works brought down to a local level. It is on its way because where sin doth abound. Grace abounds more. That is the first thing that God showed me is getting ready to take place very quickly for the church. The second thing, everybody hang on. The second thing that God showed me was that angelic activity is going to increase. Amen. Let me say that again. Angelic activity is going to increase. Reminds me of reading in the book of Revelations when John being with that angel, after that angel showed him all the incredible things that was to take place and we get down to Revelation 19 and 20 and 21, we see John falling on his face before that angel and that angel said, get up, what are you doing? I'm a servant of the most high God and to all of those, amen, that are in the kingdom. Literally, that angel was telling John, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Can I tell you that angels are coming in a greater way in this hour to help? Angelic activity is going to become normal in the local church. Angelic activity is going to become normal in the local church. Then it's not going to be one of these hype situations. They're not coming to be seen and to be worshiped. And for us to brag on them, that is not, if you know anything about angels, that is never the purpose of angels. And that'll actually frustrate what God is wanting to do with angelic help in this hour. But I want you to know they're coming to help us. 
They're coming to strengthen us. Bible tells us after 40 days of temptation and fighting with Satan, Jesus Christ in that wilderness, immediately after that temptation and that attack from the enemy, angels came and ministered to him. Can I tell you, angels are looking forward to coming to help the church in a greater way. We have to understand that angelic activity has always been a part of the kingdom. So I don't know why there is this taboo about angelic activity in the church in this hour. In your New Testament, we can spend all day in the Old Testament and sometimes we can contend with that. In your New Testament, in the church age in your Bible, it was filled with angelic activity. The first dawning of the New Testament in the book of Matthew chapter one, they first are introduced to an angel coming with a message. Can I tell you, because it's supposed to be normal for angelic activity to be of aid to the heirs of salvation. Gabriel shows up and says, I've got a message, good tidings of great joy. And I'm telling you, he came with that message. In the book of Acts, angels were instrumental throughout the book of Acts, showed up at Cornelius house and said, I'm getting ready to help you find the kingdom of God. Can I tell you, we need angels walking around in our streets, leading people that are hungry to the church of the living God. And it's getting ready to increase in this hour. The Bible tells us it's common. Matter of fact, in Hebrews 13 and two, the Bible tells us not to forget to entertain strangers because thereby some have entertained angels unawares. What is he trying to tell us? They are around and they are here to help. And it is getting ready to increase in this hour. And the third thing I wanna say as I get ready to close this session today, I'm looking forward to teaching this session in a greater depth at General Conference this year. But as I close today, this third powerful event that God is getting ready to help with the, with the church in this, in this hour. Everybody hang on. Secrets are going to be revealed. Secrets are going to be revealed. Bible told Daniel, seal it up. This information is privileged for the time in the end. There are many times in your scriptures where the information was forbidden and reserved for the end time. Revelations were, were restricted and reserved for the end time. I call it classified spiritual data. Can I tell you that in this hour, all of those things that were sealed up for now is getting ready to be opened for now. We're getting ready to see prophets and teachers and pastors and evangelists and apostles step into a dimension like never before where they're going to receive information and revelation and impartation that is going to elevate the experience of the church to levels that is beyond the normal reason of man because God is not going to leave us without clues. God is going to fill us in. And like he told Daniel to seal it up, it's getting ready to be opened up. Didn't the Bible tell us that knowledge will increase in this last hour? How, why did we think that that was talking about the world's intellect and the world's knowledge and the world's experience? And that may be true because the world has increased in knowledge. But I'm, I've come to tell this general conference in this session, the knowledge of the kingdom is getting ready to increase in this. I feel the Holy Ghost. The knowledge of the kingdom is getting ready to increase in this hour. I say, Lord, give us the information and the prophetic impartations that we need. Raise up the prophets. Raise up the apostles, raise up the evangelists, raise up the pastors and teachers, raise up the fivefold ministry in this hour, oh God, so that we can have the information and be equipped to not be ignorant to the enemy's devices. Let the secrets be revealed for this dark hour. I'm told that there's never been an hour darker than the hour we're sailing into, but I'm also told there's never been an hour where the church and the people of God will have more power than the hour we are sailing into. And we may be headed into the unknown, but always when there is a shift, there is an aspect of the unknown. Always. 
when there is a shift, a paradigm shift, there is some aspects of the unknown. God told Adam, he said, Adam, if you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. He told Adam that. Adam was an eternal being. Adam probably said, what's die? He told Noah, Noah, there shall be a flood that floods the entire earth and there's going to be water come down from heaven. The Bible also inserted that up until that point, there had never been rain. There was only a dew. So I'm sure Noah said, what is rain? And what is flood? Paradigm shift, revelation, and transference. He said to the apostles, he breathed on them. You shall receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. What's tongues? You shall receive it. He told the church, there's coming a rapture where this mortal will put on immortality in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I'm sure we're saying, what's rapture? We've never seen anything like it. We've never heard anything like it. But can I tell you, as surely as Adam knew what die was, as Noah knew what flood was, as the apostles knew what Holy Ghost, and we know what Holy Ghost speaking in tongues is, there is coming a rapture where the unknown will be made known. And let me add one more aspect, church. Before that rapture, there's coming something called greater works. A godly reset is actually a godly metamorphosis. We're getting ready to evolve into greater works. You're gonna see the greatest aspect of the church in the future than we have ever seen in the past. We're headed there. A godly reset is coming. Amen. God bless you. Hope this session was a blessing to you. We're getting ready for a big finale. Let's be a part of the church of the living God. Amen. Amen.